more faithful than I am. Yes, Lord. Because as many things that I said I was going to do, and I, my heart was in the right place to do it, but I didn't do it. Uh huh. Praise God for a God being faithful enough to not just say it, but He's faithful enough to do it. Yes. God, yes. God, God don't just talk a good name. Yes. If I say it, yes. you, you can take that to the bank. Take it to the bank. I'm going to yes. do it. Hallelujah. Come on, y'all. Let me start something yes. here before we read our scripture. All right. Come on, son. Yes. Amen. Woo, glory. Hallelujah. Jesus. Job said, I esteem thy word. Yes. Higher than my necessary food. Yes, he said. That means whatever God has said is more important than what my mama may have said, or my daddy may have said, or my prayer partner may have said. If God has said it, yes, uh, amen. If God has said it, ooh, y'all. Ooh, Jesus. Yes, he did. The word itself will corral all the resources that you need for you to do what God has said to do. You hear what I'm saying? The word itself will do that. And so today, amen, by the Spirit of God, amen, I, I think we're going to conclude our series entitled, The Cluster. Amen. amen. The Cluster. The Cluster. You know, when I was coming up on the George as a young minister, before I was actively preaching and that type of thing, we could tell how the message was going to go by how excited the preacher was at the beginning of the message. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Amen. Yes, sir. Amen. Yes, sir. Yes, amen. It's dangerous when your preacher is happy, amen, before he even reads the scripture. Yeah. Yeah. But let me tell you why I'm happy. I am happy because what God is going to say to us today, if you allow it, will absolutely be mind-boggling. Yeah. Father, do what only you can do, and do it in a way that only you can do it. You are the puppet master. We are your puppets. Yes, we are. Shift us how you want to. Move us how you want to. In this place today, God, that every heart, spirit, and mind will now align themselves with your frequency. Yes. You don't adjust to us, but we're adjusting yes. to you. Yes, we do. Speak how you want to speak today. Yes, move how you want to move. We give you free reign and free course in the mighty name of Jesus. If you would, go touch three people and say, the cluster, the cluster. The cluster. The cluster. The cluster. You touch them and you can take your seats. Yes, yes, yes. Amen. So folks, if you would, amen, uh, as excited as I am, I'm not so much excited to preach or teach or deliver as it is. I'm also excited just about reading. And I, and I want to I read a couple things to you, amen, and then, and then we'll begin to expound on that. But we took, we, our launch scripture is Isaiah 65 and 8, right? I launched scriptures, Isaiah 65 and 8, where it says that the blessing is in the cluster. Mm -hmm. yeah. The new wine is the cluster, and there is a blessing in it. Isaiah 65, the new wine is the cluster, mm -hmm. and there is a blessing in it. Old wine is doing things by yourself. New wine is doing it in clusters, in groups, in teams. New wine is allowing other gifts, other callings, other anointings, amen, to come alongside you. New wine, amen, is realizing what you are not and ensuring that you bring people around you to staff what you are not. Watch this now, because you don't have to be good at everything. That's good. Amen. Amen. Be grateful for somebody who's good at something that you're not. Yes. Uh -huh. Amen. 
You don't have to be outstanding in every category and in everything. But God says, I am faithful enough, amen, that I can put people around you that, 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 that are so good at something that they make you feel small. Uh -huh. Now, being felt, feeling small because other people do things so well is not a bad thing. I believe we need more of that. Amen. We need more. We need more. More of those environments, praise God, uh, uh, where people can challenge us with their faith. Amen. Amen. I'm concerned that this generation we're so moved by being the biggest voice and 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 so moved by being the one that everybody would listen to and and being the one that everybody would come to that we stopped going to other people. Wow. When people all the time come to you and you have the answer for this and you have a word for this and you, you got a scripture for this, this, and the other, for, for some people they begin to think that they don't need to ask nobody nothing because everybody is asking them. Mm -hmm. Say that again. So the new line is doing things in clusters, in teams, in groups. Anything significant will never be a solo act. And anything worthwhile We'll take a team. Yeah. It could be a team of two or a team of 200. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But it would take a team. You have a single mom or a single dad. And they say, man, I'm, I'm single and I'm raising my kids by myself. Watch this. But you drop it off to that teacher every morning at 7.30. Uh -huh. And that teacher has your child until you pick them up at 3 p.m. The bus drops them off, whatever the case may be. And then on Wednesdays or on Sundays, if you belong to a local church, you're dropping that kid off to that youth teacher. And then they have them for a couple of hours. And so you don't realize that you're not parenting your child by yourself. No, you ain't. Matter of fact, if you if you include uh, if you exclude sleeping time when you're there with your child, you would actually realize that your teacher spends more time with your child than you do as a parent. Yeah. Uh -huh. so true. Waking true. hours. Yeah. <laughs> so actually, a single mom or a single dad is parenting with the teacher at the, in the in the in, in, in the school. They're parenting with the local youth teacher youth workers or whatever the case may be, if they go, if they belong to a sporting event or are part of a sporting team, then that coach, amen, volleyball coach, football coach, t-ball coach, whatever, you're, you're, you're in a cluster with that t-ball coach, praise God, amen, and if they belong to a boys and girls club or something like that, I mean, there, there's a lot of people that have a hand in things that you have a hand in, we just don't see it that way all the time, but listen to what I'm saying, folks, the new wine and the blessing is in doing, is in doing things in teams, if you are a lone ranger, you are only going to go so far. Amen. That's right. Amen. If you are someone that says, I'm the only one that can do it. I'm uh, God gifted me to do this. And so y'all just get out of my way. Amen. He might have gifted you to do that. He might have gifted you to oversee it. He might have gifted you to pull people together. But he, he did not gift you to do everything. But watch this now. There are certain seasons, amen, where, where you will do things that other people should be doing. And for whatever reason, they're not doing. I'm not knocking that. Praise God. We have to step into those moments and ensure that things still get handled and still get done. But as a mode of operation, your, 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 your primary mode of operation should be, I'm not doing this by myself. I am not going here by myself. I'm not going there by myself. I can go by myself, but it doesn't mean that I am. And so we've learned that the devil has an entourage. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. The enemy, he, he never does things in once. Come on, man. Jesus went to cast the devil out of the man, and the man said, my name is Legion. Right. Yeah. Uh -huh. It's thousands of us. Right. But believers, I mean, all the time, we're the ones that are isolating ourselves. Come on, Pastor. We're the ones that are pulling away, withdrawing. You know, we're the ones that, you know, I can do bad by myself. I don't need nobody. We're just me and God. Get out of that mentality, ladies and gentlemen. Get out of that mentality. Listen to me. That, that, that isolating spirit, praise God, amen, it leads to other spirits that are come, amen, and help and be active in your life. Amen. Just, Praise God. Just because you, I mean, how can the point guard be the center and the point guard? Come on. How can a quarterback throw the ball and then be the wide receiver and go run down there and get it? I mean, there, there, there has to be some dependence and some reliability on other people who might not be as good as you. That's right. Come on. It's all right, though. It's all right. Did you hear me? So it's not that, that that you can only surround yourself with people that are better than you or better than you. But watch this now. There are some people that do things better than you that need to be on your team. But there are some people that don't do it as well as you, but they need to be on your team. That's Amen. right. That's right. Amen. That's no Amen. 
So, but God, the, 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 Satan is not the only one that has an entourage. God himself, you understand, right, has an entourage. Yeah, yeah. The first thing Jesus did when he came out of the water, amen, and after he was tempted of the devil 40, 40 years and then, uh, 40 days and all this other type of stuff, and he came out, what did he start doing? Calling people to himself. This is the Savior, and the first thing he started doing, follow me, follow me, follow me, follow me. Follow me. Come be a part of what I'm doing. Come be a part of what I'm doing. When was the last time you asked somebody to come be a part of what you're doing? Come on. You don't make them, but there's nothing wrong with giving them the opportunity. I'm saying, come be a part of this. Right. This is significant. This is wonderful. This is useful. Watch this now. And you don't even, you might not even think you can help me right now. But stay with me, Mama. Everybody that comes into your life, thank you, Holy Spirit. Everybody that comes into your life is not meant to come into your life today and start blessing you tomorrow. Right. You got to be a person of wisdom, praise God, that can understand and realize that somebody's contribution into your life might not be for another year or two down the road. And you got to enjoy the ride until they get to the point to where they can begin to pour back into you or help you or minister to you. And so don't be so quick to call everybody to call somebody dead weight. Because they can't contribute something today. Come on, tap the neighbor and say, be patient with me. Be patient with me. There's some things in me that you don't even realize that's in me, but if you can just be patient with me, those things will begin to grow and come out. If I'm going to be a part of the cluster, on one side, yes, the cluster has to adjust to my personality, adjust to my experiences, etc. But I should never make the cluster adjust to my unhealthy behaviors. Right, amen. I should never make the cluster adjust, amen, to sin in my lifestyle. Hey, why is it doing that back there, gentlemen? Is that dead battery? It's up going dead. What do you do? Let's adjust. Listen, so, so what is it? Is it a one thing? If I am doing something that I shouldn't be doing, and I make you adjust to that. That's not all. All right. All right. Well, I'm sorry I just talk like that. Or I'm sorry every once and again I just curse. Or I'm sorry every once and again I just do this. Well, I'm sorry but I get in this environment. What's this? You so no sorry a lot. Yeah. Yeah. Yes, Lord. Let me go ahead and help you with that. Yes, Lord. So I'm sorry is not an apology. It's not. It's not. that are sorry, but are not apologetic to them. There are a lot of people that are sorry, but not apologetic. They're sorry that you caught them. They're sorry that, that they're now going to be embarrassed. They're sorry that what they said they were, they are not. So being sorry doesn't mean, that's why the Bible says godly sorrow is what produces repentance. Not worldly sorrow, not, not just because I got caught. mercy. He did not have pity on him just because he was sorry. That's right. If I did do commit an act or some type of treason or some type of sin or transgression and the extent of my heart is just the fact that I am sorry, but that sorriness that I feel has not led me to genuinely repent and to truly make things right. Watch this now. Why would there be grace and mercy extended? Right. A, lot, a lot of us are sorry about things that we'll do again next week. Yeah. 
He didn't say you're not on your way to heaven. He didn't say that uh-huh. you're not a Christian. But he said your, your little stuff. Your little stuff. That you should be able to handle on your own. Yes. Yes. Watch this. I'm helping y'all this morning. Yeah, you is. Yeah, you is. Watch this. You this is what I'm going to say. This is what I'm going to say. You can define a relationship by the level of trouble that someone would bring to you to fix. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, you know, she got that fire going on up here. So, here is the big God of the whole universe. Ooh, right. Yes. And I say, God, I don't, don't want to offend nobody, but God, I can't put gas in my car. Ah. Uh, mm. Can you do something about that, Father? And God says, you're well and able. You can work overtime. Uh-huh. You can borrow the money. <laughs> you can go to a covenant friend and say, can you help me out? Watch this now. Help me out this week. I'll help you out next week. Don't minimize me to help put gas in your car when I'm the God of the universe. Amen. God don't care about the little stuff in your life. But what I am saying is, God told him, you can fix this. Right. Yes. You just got too much pride to go ask somebody for help. Yes. Yes. And so you want to minimize me right. Right. while you stay the same, but you want me to change. Yes. You should feel respected when somebody bring you a big problem. It's like, okay, but hey man, you think I can you really think I can do something about that? Amen. Because it brings you big problems. Right. You got big faith. Yeah. Amen. Uh-huh. Amen. Amen. <laughs> oh, Jesus. We're we'll reading scripture in a moment, guys. All right. Jesus. We are reading scripture. Watch this now. I want to make sure you get it. The cluster makes you live on a higher level. Mm-hmm. Yes, it will. So if you feel challenged, the cluster is doing its job. But it's like a country club or a golf club, right? Membership has its privileges, but membership also has its sacrifices. Yes. Mm-hmm. Yes, Lord. Anything that I can just belong to and don't have to change at all, is it worth belonging to? That is true. Did you catch what I just said? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. No, there's going to be that. I mean, I, I, I live like that. I was 18 when I gave my life to the Lord. So for 18 years, I lived my life the way I want to live. And then I get saved, give my life to the Lord. I say I'm gonna keep living like how I've been living. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Well, yeah, what did I get saved from? But also, what? Why did I even get saved? Right. <laughs> we get saved to change. Uh huh. Uh-huh. And oftentimes, we have to change in areas where we don't think we need to. That's yes, Lord. Lord. That's true. Yes, Lord. Mm. I can testify. I love this one. The cluster. Protects the cluster. The family protects the family. The group protects the group. The team protects the team. Lone Rangers have no protection. Right. Uh Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Why isn't that when Elijah ran all that far away from Jezebel into the wilderness? That when the finally when the Lord began to talk to him, the Lord said, What are you doing here? Get up and go back to the team. Good teaching this morning. Yeah, it is. Yeah, it is. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. If you can handle it, get up and go back to the person that hurts you. Come on. Come on. Come on. Come on. Come on. Because if, oh, hallelujah. Oh, I don't know if you can handle it. If I let you hurt me and run out of my life, I can deal with that hurt forever. Come on. That's right. That's right. If I let you hurt me and then I run out of your life, I can deal with that hurt forever. That's true. That's true. I had my daughters with me yesterday and we had to go pick up some yesterday. <clears throat> And uh, there was someone that we saw uh, in the, the place where we were. 
And uh, and this person saw me, and I know they might have saw somebody, and you know they saw me. <laughs> <laughs> so this person saw me, and I know they saw me, and they knew I saw them, but they immediately tried to divert and go the other way. And I stepped over and was like, blessings to you, so and so. I was like, I was like great to see you. Praise God. Watch this now. Sometimes, watch this now, ladies and gentlemen. All right. If you want to get over stuff. All right. or I don't want to talk to them and so I, I want to just dodge them. Dodging them means dodging the issue. Dodging the issue means I'm dodging the hurt. Dodging the hurt means God can't do nothing about it. No, I'm going to step right in here. Amen. Say, good morning. How you doing this morning? Why you not? I, there is something about me. You're not ready to change until you're ready to see that person again. You're not ready to get over it, praise God, until you can see them, look them in their eyes and say, praise God. I have 
haven't seen you in a month. Yeah, I was back home burying my grandfather. Mm. See? Mm. You see? Yeah. You see? There you go. That's you see? That's real, sir. That's real. But we take assumptions <laughs> yeah, and make laws and yep. rules. Yep. Yep. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 And I'm telling you now, God, folks, there will be, there has been, and will continue to be more opposition from those who say they believe like you do than there will be from the world. Yeah, yeah. Uh -huh. yeah that's true. Yeah, sad but true. Uh, intercessors, we have a very powerful, very strong intercessor prayer ministry here in the, in the church. And I sent them a message this past week, and I said, you are to lift up I apostles, Apostle Ron, Pastor Hope, like you never have before, put a fence around them. Because over the last week, they've been attacked in immeasurable ways. I said to my wife, I said, baby, it couldn't be that some of what was going on with me and what I'm feeling is because I have, a, I have a man begin to undertake some of the same things that my spiritual leader is going through. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And you know where those attacks are coming from? Other pastors, other church leaders yeah. of large denominations, of large, they got large followings, that, that, and that's where the attack is coming from. Not from the world. You better quit. I don't like that. You should refuse to talk about another believer. We should refuse to talk about anybody. But you definitely should refuse to talk about another believer. That's right. That's right. Amen. Amen. That's between them and God. Just leave it alone. That's right. right. That's right. Trust that. I'm in a cluster of Christians, but I'm doing a cluster of harm. in a cluster of this church, where the faith. Uh -huh. I talk about other people that go to this church. Mm -hmm. I disrespect my fellow sister, my fellow brother, when we're part of the same cluster. Mm -hmm. Amen. Wow. The cluster can't protect me when I'm disrespecting it. Right. Mm -hmm. That's right. That's right. Amen. That's right. Another, That's right. Way, another way Mike brought up what he says, you know what? What you honor will be drawn to you. What you honor will grow in your life. Yeah. Uh -huh. What you dishonor will leave your life. Wow. That's good. That's, good. Yeah. That's very good. So true. That's true. true. Yes, it's real. Got me here, Father. The more people, so according to 65, the new wine is in the cluster. And there's a blessing in it. The more people you can involve, the stronger the mix and the anointing. Right. The more people you can involve, the stronger the mixture and the stronger the anointing. Why? Because everybody's bringing a part that you can't bring by yourself. Right? Amen. This guy is fast. This guy is strong. This guy is not fast and he's not strong, but he got to the outthink a fox. That's good. This guy is not strong. Can't really think. Uh, <laughs> can't strong, can't, uh, not strong, can't think, not fast. Boy, says no. But he can do all the little things that you need to do. Uh -huh. He'll do all the little things you need to do and won't complain, won't say nothing. He's needful for Amen. Yes. You gotta be able to open up your aperture zone to see that people don't have to be gifted where you're gifted to help you. Right. Amen. 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 So true. So the strong, the more people you can involve, the stronger the mix and the stronger the anointing. That's why Jesus had tax collectors, lawyers, uh -huh. fishermen, yes. come on, mm -hmm. doctors. Mm -hmm. He had all these people, all these, all these different areas of life. Hallelujah. Yeah. Oh, Jesus. Because the doctor has a certain dimension, the lawyer has a certain dimension, the fisherman has a certain dimension. Come on now. Yeah, Everybody yeah. has a certain dimension. Don't just talk at people who are just like you. Yeah. Have some diversity to your friends. Yeah. Have some diversity to those who you hang with. I mean, you know what I'm saying? Go hang out with, the, with, with, with those that just want to be in the library, just want to have their nose in a book. Find out what they're reading and what they're studying. Amen. And then there's times you go and hang out with the athletes and you're out on the field, on the court, or whatever it is you're doing, what you're doing. Then go hang with the quiet person that in an hour and a half you talk about one thing or just two things. And then go hang out with somebody else that all they can do is talk. But in the once in a while, they'll say something that's worth listening to. I mean, wow. you got to have some diversity. 
loyalty. Yes, Lord. Don't make people pigeonhole you in to somebody. When Jesus went and ate with the with the with the sinners and all these different ones, like what is it that he's doing? He he doesn't he know that these people are sinners? How dare he go to Zacchaeus' house? How dare he? Because people will try to make you hang around people who they think you should hang around. But Jesus said, you don't want to stay. You 
you said it, and all you did was say it. Because you didn't think it, you didn't strategize it. Yes, she told you what to do, and you said, yes, ma'am. Yes, Listen here. Listen here. Listen here. Your position and your title doesn't mean that you can't, should not, and, and can't work with somebody else who doesn't have the position or the title that you have. Right. 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 Yes, sir. Amen. We're talking about the cluster, ladies and gentlemen. Yes. Uh -huh. yes. Hallelujah. So Jesus spent all this time talking about the branch and the branches and the, and the fruit and the vine and this, that, and the other, and how, how we bear fruit. <coughs> we can't bear fruit without being in a cluster. Mm. Any fruit that we bear apart from the cluster is a solo fruit, is a solo act, and it won't last long. Eventually, you're going to have to have a team. Let me ask you to flip over to Acts chapter 2. Acts chapter 2. This is not the most exciting message in the world, but folks, you got to hear it. There appeared unto them cloven tombs like as a fire. And it did what sat upon each of them. And they were all filled with the Holy Ghost. And began to speak with other tongues as the Spirit gave them utterance. And there were dwelling at Jerusalem Jews, devout men, out of every nation under heaven. Now when this was noise abroad, or when it began to spread what had happened outside of the house, began to flood the city. So what happens in this house needs to get into the city. Amen. So when it was noise abroad, they said the multitude came together and they were confounded because they, they were confounded that every man heard them speak in his own language. And they were all amazed and marveled, saying one to another, <clears throat> Behold, are not all these which speak Galileans? <clears throat> How then do we hear every man in our own tongue or our native language wherein we were born. Parthians and Medes, Emelites, and the dwellers in Mesopotamia and in Judea, Cappadocia and Pontius and Asia, Persia, <coughs> Pamphylia and Egypt, and in the parts of Libya about Cyrene and strangers of Rome, Jews, proselytes, Cretes and Arabians, we do hear them speak in our tones, the wonderful works of God. Look at how many nations, how many tribes, how many different type of people <coughs> were filled with the Spirit, but yet they still had unity. Uh -huh. unity. The outpouring of the Holy Spirit was not for one denomination or one race or one specific group of people. This, ladies and gentlemen, is the cluster. Yes, yes sir. 
This, ladies and gentlemen, is the cluster. People that are not like you will get the same things that you got. Yeah. And people that you're not like, you will get the things that they got. Yeah. I, this is this this is just sound, just, just, yeah, just it's teaching good. here. Just, just, to just, this is stuff that back in the day, Jamal, back in the day, I just read all this stuff and skip them. What is the Arabians and the Proselytes and the Romans? What does that mean? That's, that's not a good preaching point. Let's skip over that. But then as you grow up in God and you begin to understand and realize that you begin to have the heart of God, that everything that you thought was not necessary. Uh -huh. yeah. 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 And things that you thought didn't really matter a whole lot. I, I laugh, I tell them, you know, uh, uh, like, like for me, like stretching. Man, there's this, when I was, I was 19 and stretch. I get out of the car and go get the quarter stop playing basketball. You know, stretch, what you stretch? I was 23, 24, same thing. Stretch, what do you mean stretch? Oh, wait, wait. Let me tell you something. When I go to the court, Somebody in here saying, why ain't you that pointing? You better start stretching right now. <laughs> 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 but you grow up a little bit, and some things become important. Yeah, you can't do some things Oh, Jesus. Hey, stop, stop, stop. This, this, y'all get back. Let's get saved. Come on, let's just stay. <laughs> Mm -hmm. 
just want to see what happens. So you want to see what they do next. Oh, what is he going to do next? Wow. Watch out. But Peter, standing up, verse 14 says, uh -huh. but Peter, standing up with the eleven. Uh -huh. Notice how I look. Oh, there we go. Notice what he said. Peter, standing up with the eleven. Mm -hmm. Why did it say Peter standing up being the eleven? Uh-huh. Mm -hmm. But Peter, standing up with the eleven. Oh, guys, let me just do this for a second. This is so crazy because in every other place in Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, Peter was always standing by himself. Wow. <laughs> Come on, am I right? Yeah. Every other place, Jesus said, okay, if it is you, if it is come, Peter said, yeah. Jesus said, come. Peter got up, the rest of the 11 sat right down now. Yeah. Peter was putting his foot in his mouth by himself. Yes. Uh -huh. <laughs> Nobody was standing with him. Now watch this now. This is important because this is stuff that, that we often miss. Being filled with the Spirit. Having a Holy Ghost encounter and a Holy Ghost and Spirit, Holy Ghost and Spirit experience. Certainly, that can happen with the evidence of speaking in tongues, and in most cases it does. Mm -hmm. But what we forget to talk about is the miracle is the boldness that comes yes. upon people. Yes. Yes. A sign of being filled with the Spirit yes. is the boldness that you or I have in that same yes. Spirit that we said we're filled with. Yep. Yeah. 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 Now you got to understand something. A lot of these people, devout Jews, the last time they saw Peter, he was denying Jesus. Mm -hmm. Uh-huh. Mm -hmm. The last time they ever saw Peter was when he was saying, I don't know him. What's this stuff? Get away from me. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. You know your life is changed. <laughs> when the same people who knew you win. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Came down by the All right. All right. Some of us have not grown up enough to deal with people from our past. Mm -hmm. Yes, Lord. Watch this now. Mm -hmm. Why didn't John stand up and lead the and preach the first message of the New Testament church? Why would Why wasn't it James? Why, why couldn't it have been Andrew? Uh -huh. Why couldn't one of the other disciples? Notice what it says. Peter stood up, and then the other eleven stood up. Mm -hmm. Baby, help me up here, because I'm sure I don't want to preach on these points, but this is too good. Yes. Mm -hmm. and Everybody had counted Peter out. Uh -huh. The last time we saw you, you was on drugs. Last time we saw you, you was shacking up. Last time we saw you, you was going through this and going through that. But the same person that you counted is the one, the first one that stands up and testifies to the goodness of the Lord. Yes, yes, hallelujah. Hallelujah. Ah, he stood up and then the other 11. The other 11 followed his faith, but watch this now. Watch what he preaches and the first thing that he says as he stands up. He didn't stand up and say, hey guys, I knew y'all were and I was. I knew y'all know me when I was just, I know the last time y'all was. He didn't deal with any of that. He didn't uh -huh. care how they saw it because it wasn't about him. Yeah. About him. He was now in a, a cluster. <laughs> <laughs> what does this mean? All those fucking these men running off of Peter standing up with the 11, lifting up his voice, lifting up with the 11 because obviously we know in Acts chapter 1 that they had to cast lots who would take Judas, Judas's place because Judas would have been the 11 in this case as it were because Peter would have been 12 but Judas hung himself, killed himself, worked against me so he had to cast lots and so the lots fell upon Matthias and so Matthias became a man the 11th uh, or actually the 12th but in this particular case in Acts chapter 2 he was the 11th because Peter was the 12th but listen here now so that's why there's 11 that's why there's 11 apostles and then Peter in this case was the 12th and he stood off uh -huh. and he said you men of Judea, uh -huh. and all you that dwell at Jerusalem, be this known unto you and hearken to my words. For these people are not drunk like you think. Come on, somebody. Yeah. It says, as, as you would suppose. So in other words, you're misdiagnosing this new wine. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yeah. Spectators 
will misdiagnose your experience. Oh, she just happy. You just crazy. What do you mean she just happy? That's the power of God. Yeah. Yes. Yes. Oh, that's just how they are. Don't you dare let somebody minimize your experience. Right. Amen. If you got to shout to get the victory, you shout. If you got to dance to get the victory, you dance. If you got to run to get the victory, you run. If you got to, amen, speak in tongues to get it, you speak in tongues. If you got to prophesy, you prophesy. But don't you dare let somebody, don't you dare let an onlooker. All right. Yes. All right now. Minimize your experience. Yeah. And they are always talk about a cluster that they're not part of. Right. 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 And so then they try to label you. Yes. Jesus freaks, holy rollers. Mm -hmm. They're not drunk like you suppose. Sitting in this but the third hour of the day. Oh, hold on. Peter said, "Hold on, it's nine o'clock." Right. right. It's nine a.m. in the morning. Yeah. It ain't midnight. Yeah. These men ain't drunk like you think they're drunk. You are misdiagnosing them. Watch this now. Oh, hallelujah, glory to God. Uh -huh. Spectators. Misdiagnose what they can't explain. Right, right. Yeah, they will. Yeah, they will. The cluster knows exactly what's going on. Uh -huh. Those outside the cluster have to misdiagnose it or, or miscalculate it because they want to try to reduce you and uh -huh. reduce your experience yeah. to being nothing yeah. because they realize yeah. that the experience that you had. They're not drunk like you think they're drunk. Right. Seeing that it is but nine o'clock in the morning. Mm -hmm. right. But this is that which was spoken by the prophet uh -huh. Joel, yes. who said, In the last days, days. I'll pour out my spirit upon all flesh. Yes. Oh, yes. hallelujah. Yes. Your yes. sons and your daughters, yes. they will prophesy. Yes. Uh -huh. Your old men, come on. They would dream dreams. He said, not. he said, let me give you a prophetic account of what is happening. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> Old wine is something that you know what's going to happen when it happens. Uh -huh. <laughs> Old wine is, I know at this part of the service, this is going to happen. And then at this part in the song, she going to throw her hat off and start dancing. Come on. And then at this part in the message, she's going to throw the microphone down and start running in the lap. Huh? Then, then there's people that think they know you. I don't know if you're going to look at somebody and say, you don't know me. Because I don't even really know me. The best part of me is still coming out. And I'm not going to into to that part. So how can you say you know me when I'm still knowing me? So, so, is it, is it, so the old wine is predictable. Uh -huh. Yeah. They think they know what's going to happen in your marriage, what's going to happen in your relationship, what's going to happen with your children, what's going to happen in your life. But the new wine is a wine that's unpredictable. A new wine is a wine that says, wow, it's 1107. What's going on? How, how in the world did this happen so fast? New wine says, it's not even a season for it, but yet it's happening. New wine says, I'm not even qualified for it, but yet I find myself walking into it. New wine says, it's not about what I'm doing or what I will do, but new wine says, it's about what God has for me. Somebody shout new wine. What do you want? Old wine that you can always calculate and always know what's going to happen and how it's going to happen. When Jesus stepped on the scene, he was the epitome of new wine and they didn't know what he was going to do, how he was going to do it, when he was going to do it. They heard messages that had never been preached before. There was in gatherings, amen, that had things happen that never happened before. Why? Because he was bringing new wine. New wine. I don't want that, but it's predictable in me. I want that which is unpredictable. Let me make my decision here because y'all tired. Watch this. I'm not tired. Y'all are. I see it. Watch this. Now watch this. Here's where I begin to shift. This is the word of the Lord to this house. The word of the Lord in this season. I shared a little bit of this with the intercessors last week. God see. You know how you watch the sprint commercials, the 
AT&T, Verizon, Orange, and they just say, the next big thing. Uh-huh. Mm -hmm. And you say, here's the next big thing. And I'm going to tell them you believe it by how you respond to what I'm going to say. He said, the next big thing is no more ad. Mm. No more ad. Uh-huh. The church has gotten content with addition. Wow. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Wow. For some of us, we get raises or whatever, and, and we're excited for you know. I don't want to minimize nobody's the circumstance, but 50 cent raise or a dollar raise here, or a three percent raise, or however you want to look at it, you know. And that's addition. Mm -hmm. Praise God. Three folks got saved. What a mighty, mighty thing. Praise God for that. That's Adam. Mm -hmm. To move into the realm of multiplication <coughs> takes a higher grade. Yes, yes, it does. 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 Yes, it you have does. to introduce multiplication yes. at the right age in right. a student's life. Uh huh. Right. Yes, Amen. 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 Yes, Lord. They got to have tag down so that they can properly multiply. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. You and I have been excitedly grateful for things being added to us. Add to your faith and knowledge. Add to your knowledge, wisdom. Add to your 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 but God says, now I'm going to move my people into a place of multiplication. Yes. Right. All right, now. I don't see that one. Yes, Lord. Yes, amen. Lord. Yes, Lord. If, if you can't add up the blessings. Right. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. If we can't even factor and come to a conclusion of what it means to add, how in the world are we ready for multiplication? <laughs> so for those of you that your faith is in the place where God's just going to add to you, you better step up today. Amen. Amen. God says, I'm doing added to See, I don't stop this. Can you count on Abraham? I can't, I can't count on that. And you don't want God to do something that you can count. <laughs> the Bible says things that your eyes haven't seen, your ears haven't heard, that have been entered into your heart, the things that God has in store for you. You budget really well, but God's not going to bust your budget. <laughs> Let me ask you a question. Let me make, make, make a statement here first of all. Here's the first statement. Don't move out of this building top. God's not about to bust your budget. <laughs> Everything that you've been calculating, you have to recalculate. My, my God. Hallelujah. Made up your mind, oh God. Ah, ah. Yeah, my God. Ooh, you made up 
your mind mm. about a certain level you was going to live on, and God's yeah. not going to bust it. Hallelujah. My mind. Jesus. Mm, mm, mm. Some of you in here says, I want to hold my God. <coughs> you said, I, I just want to have more than my mama had. I just want to have more than my dad. I just want to be <laughs> further than my God. I said, you don't understand. Mm. Ooh, Jesus. The realm that I'm bringing you into, you'll be able to bring your whole family out with the realm I'm bringing you into. <laughs> us 
in your name. Yes. Am I right? Yes. Demons are subject to us in your name. Uh -huh. yes. We lay hands on the same and they recover. Just don't reach us over there. No. Because your name is written in the we're like, watch this now. All of that happened because I multiplied yes. myself yes. in you before yes. you left. Yes, yes. 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 Lord. Yes. 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 I'm about to have you stand in just a moment. The cluster is meant to reproduce itself at such a rate. I was praying in my office. Before the man of God came in and gave me back, and let me take what the Lord said. Listen to me. He said, Son, watch this now. Let me go back to what I just said. What did I just say? Uh, the cluster will reproduce. Uh -huh. At such a rate. Mm -hmm. And here's what the Lord said to me in my office. He says, son, watch this. Mm -hmm. Grace for the pace. Uh -huh. yeah. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Uh -huh. yeah. Yes, Lord. You're going to start doing things and, and at such a rate, at such a pace that, yeah. watch this now. Yeah. The only people that can keep up is those that are called to be in your life. Yeah. Yes, Lord.
sure if you're ready to bring that up before I open up the altar, and I will open up the altar. Before I do that, will you bring that up? Pray the faith that's in me. So we extend it. You've heard what God is saying. I need you to throw your hands up in the air and just begin to talk to the Father out of this very word right here. Thank you. 